What's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to listen and learn from myself and the epic Dr. Donald Lehman, who's been my mentor for a long time. Anyway, I'm so happy you guys are liking these videos. If you like them, share them, feel free to comment. Uh, the more people that learn about the topics that we're teaching, the better. Today, we're gonna to talk about something that I think is very important, especially as it relates to the current nutrition narrative, and that is obesity. But not just obesity, really the expert views of obesity, because there are two very big camps and two different perspectives. So you have one group that talks a lot about the carbohydrate insulin model, and they believe that it's all about excess carbohydrates and insulin driving obesity. And that even if calories are controlled for the concept of having higher carbohydrates that perpetuates insulin is really a bad thing. The second group is the group that's calories in, calories out. And this group says, you know, in a nutshell, that it doesn't really matter where your carbohydrates land as long as you're calorie controlled. Donald Lehman and I are going to talk to you about our perspective, which no shock is incredibly similar. And it's really the interface between the two. So um, you have to admit that insulin, excess insulin, excess carbohydrates matter, but also calories in, calories out matter. So Dr. Lehman, do you want to kick off a little bit about the history or really just perhaps your perspective? on the two different groups and, and the two groups that are really talking loudly about the obesity epidemic. Yeah, I, I, I think as with <clears throat> most times when there's a controversy, both sides are partially right <laughs> and both sides are partially misleading. Right. So I, I don't think there's any question that calories are the issue of obesity. Um, and, and I think it's always important to sort out that protein calories are different because they have a higher thermogenic effect. So what we're really comparing is carbohydrate and fat. Right. And if you're talking about those two, they're basically calories. They have really, you know, we have minimal need for essential fatty acid, but beyond that, carbohydrate and fat are nothing but calories to us. There's no re requirement for them at all. You know, they're just calories. And so, you know, I think someone like Kevin Hall's research that shows that, you know, whichever way you balance, you can have a high carbohydrate diet or a low carbohydrate diet, and you can still come into calorie balance and, and have the same body composition. You start getting into the controversy, though, is when you get out of calorie balance. And so now we start talking about, you know, what's the cause of obesity? Uh, for 50 years, we were always told that er all the problems in the diet were fat-based. Right. And I got that one wrong. Yeah, eat all the carbohydrates you want, basically. And Americans did that. So I don't think there's any question that Americans are getting 50, 55 percent of their calories from carbohydrates, and we're obese. We're eating too many calories. So anybody who doesn't think carbohydrates are a problem is not paying attention to the math. The problem that I see when I look at the carbohydrate insulin model is that as we get into the pathology of having too many calories, then the question is which is more dangerous, having more fat or having more carbs? And I think that is all we have to do is think about diabetes. I mean, carbohydrates, insulin, glucose, they have their own disease, basically. Excess carbohydrates, excess glucose is totally toxic to the body. And so I think the insulin theory has some merit in that if you challenge the body for too long with too many carbohydrates above your calorie need, you're probably going to get into serious problems quicker than having too much fat. So I believe that. If you take somebody who has uh, an obesity problem, say their metabolic syndrome or type 2 diabetes, and you lower the carbohydrate, you replace the carbohydrate gram for gram with protein, you'll correct that metabolic imbalance immediately, right. but not if you replace it with fat. <laughs> I mean, right. so that's important. People so, need to you know, understand, you, you right. Lower those carbohydrates, 
with some other nutrient and you'll cut down on those metabolic imbalances. And so I think that's where the insulin theory comes from. The extension of that though is that carbohydrates and insulin cause you to overeat and make obese, make fat cells gain more fat. And that's just not true. I mean, calories make fat cells fat. Right. And that would way. also make uh, the concept that adipocytes are the driver of the problem. Yeah, they're, right. They're and I totally disagree with that. I have studied that for 50 years, practically, uh, looking at that literature. And you're only 30. I know, I know. I, I was referring to the literature that I've studied as opposed to me personally. But no, I've actually studied it, you know, looking at fat cell metabolism and muscle metabolism. And, you know, calories are what drive it. Obesity, I mean, we know that uh, all type two diabetics, for example, are not always obese. Obesity is an right. outcome, it's a secondary outcome of abnormal metabolism. And abnormal metabolism actually begins in the skeletal muscle first, Absolutely. is the primary yeah. site. So yeah. um, the carbohydrate insulin model can't be totally discounted, but perhaps it's not completely right. So there's some aspects to it that are valuable. We know that excess glucose is toxic. So the definition of diabetes is an inability to dispose of glucose after two hours. We know that there's a subsequent rise in insulin typically, and then a drop in blood sugar, and there's this constant feeding craze, right? Um, perhaps not a constant feeding craze, but there is a subsequent sure. drop in blood sugar, which does make people hungry. Um, glycemic regulation is a problem with, you know, glycemic regulation and insulin, and especially, you know, not particularly healthy exercising individuals who have a calorie control, mm -hmm. but really um, individuals that are eating excess calories and then excess carbohydrates, really a highly palatable food. I will tell you in clinical practice though, when you do eliminate highly palatable foods, it also eliminates this binge eating way of life that people have. It eliminates this highly palatable food drive. Like if you think about it, if I go, Don, hey, are you hungry? And I go, uh, here's your grilled chicken breast with a little bit of salt. You'd be like, nah, I'm good. But if I said, hey, are you hungry? Here's, I don't know, you like chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. You'd go, well, okay, okay. right? So there's this drive yeah. to feed. Right. You know, the calories in, calories out model is very interesting. I have had, you know, and, and looking at the, the literature, metabolic ward studies are very small which arguably makes a ton of sense, very expensive, and it's, it's hard to live in a metabolic ward. We had one at, at WashU. Um, so the calories in, calories out model makes sense. I have had patients, although that they have been free living, meaning they don't stay in that metabolic ward, do everything right, very meticulous. I had one uh, Navy officer, female, really meticulous, and she tracked everything. You know, and it's possible that she just had a metabolic adaptation of that low calorie intake, but it was really hard for her to lose any kind of weight. Yeah. And we couldn't determine any other metabolic abnormalities. So, you know, people say to me, oh, well, it's just this inability to track appropriately. I don't know if I think that that's true. I think that there's some certainly genetic component. You know, I don't know if we understand the way that the microbiome plays a role. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you've seen that or if you have there's any definitely, perspective there's on definitely that. definitely differences in inefficiency. Um, I think your first statement is also true that we don't track food intake in normal settings very well. Yeah. And so, you know, the problem with, you know, you know, caloric balance rooms is they're usually very short time. And so it's hard to come in balance. Uh, and the problem with food intake in free living people is they're not necessarily always honest about what they're eating. <laughs> so it's we know that's really a, tight though, I have to we, say. But so, I, no, I agree. I mean, there's the classic studies by Claude, Claude Bouchard, right. who did twins, and he basically overfed twins a thousand calories a day. I think they had something like 20 pairs of twins, 
and they predicted that they should all, you know, and I forget how long, like four weeks or six weeks, and they predicted they should all gain some level of weight, say 16 pounds. They had some who only gained seven and some who gained right. 20. And so there's clearly differences in efficiency of metabolic regulation. They were in, they were under control. They know they all ate exactly the same thing, and yet there was differences. So efficiency isn't the same for everyone. Right. But for, for any individual, eventually it comes down to calories in, calories out. Right. And then it does come down to calories in, calories out. The other piece of that is what actually affects calories in, calories out, that balance. Your caloric need is different than my caloric need. There are things that you know come into play sometimes if people have a thyroid that's dysfunctional or they have some kind of thyroid resistance, you know, they- your, your earlier comment about appetite. I, I mean, I believe that carbohydrates drive that desire to eat. I think that fat is much less. The, the reason I want that chocolate chip cookie is not because there was fat in it, it's because it was sweet. Right. And the reason I would eat the second one is because it was also sweet and I'm addicted. <laughs> right. Right. There's also the that. Fact that. The fact that it has fat in it adds to the calories. So now we've got both going at the same time. But I would argue the reason I wanted to eat it was because it was sweet. Right. So um, all good points. I want to just wrap up this, unless there's anything more that you would like to add. But I, you know, I, I feel like it's really interesting that we see these groups kind of arguing. And perhaps it's a friendly argument, but the answer is likely somewhere in the middle. It's not just calories in, calories out. So it may come down to that, but you know, there's individuals who have metabolic dysregulation. Yes, you adjust for calories. You optimize protein, you reduce excess carbohydrates, you get insulin under control, and it really makes a difference. I mean, at least in clinical practice, I do see that. So perhaps- yeah, I, would, I, would, know, I would summarize that saying that I think both sides have a good point. I think it, it ultimately is a calorie balance, but I think carbohydrates are a serious part of it, and you've got to get the carbohydrate part under control. Uh, it's the biggest part of our calorie intake, and I think it's metabolically the most dangerous when in excess. And so I think they're both kind of partially right, and you know I, I guess they're both staking out their own ground. But I yeah. think the, the reality for most people is it's kind of in between. Yeah, and, and it, is, it is absolutely interesting because in, in clinical practice, it is definitely comes down to calories in, calories out. And it, definitely, definitely helps with body composition when you optimize for protein and you reduce that carbohydrate. So anyway, guys, I hope you found this valuable. If you have questions, please put them below, like, and share this video. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to watch.